Hi, I'm Terry Geo, and you are watching Season 10 of the Writing Community Chat Show. I would love you to check out the Kickstarter campaign for Blink and You'll Miss It, which debuted at the Edinburgh Fringe this year. With your help and support, we can get it back on the stage next year. Simply Google Kickstarter Blink and You'll Miss It to grab yourself some goodies and see this year's performance. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You're tuned into the Writing Community Chat Show, the live streaming YouTube podcast that brings you the stories of authors, screenwriters, and more. Indie or established, this show is for the community. We invite you to be a part of it. Head to the Writing Community Chat Show .com for more info. The WCCS, together as one, we get it done. Hi, my name is Chris. That's Chris, and we are, you're watching the Writing Community Chat Show. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to season 10. It has arrived and it, it, amazing things are happening. Uh, coming up on tonight's show, we have the brilliant Will Carver, who is actually stepping in for planned guest CJ Tudor. Unfortunately, she is not doing very well. She's not feeling very well. So we wish you all the best and hope for a speedy recovery. But in all honesty, I heard that she just wanted to watch Matt Hancock eat a crocodile penis on I'm a Celebrity tonight. So <laughs> she could uh, she could be quite preoccupied. And Chris Hooley is here with me. Hello, Chris. Welcome back. Hello. Yeah, I didn't know I was missing out on Matt Hancock eating a crocodile's penis, otherwise I might not have joined up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we can catch up on that, of course. And um, yeah, I mean, thank you guys for tuning that in. will be great viewing, but I'd love it to be more a severe punishment because I feel like he deserves more. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of people feel that way as well. Um, yeah. Halo says, hello, everyone. Happy Veterans Day. Indeed, it was Remembrance Day here in the UK today as well. Remembering Armistice Day and all the terrible things happened there. So we, we had a moment of silence today for the fallen veterans in our past and the people that do great things for us. So um, if you're enjoying that holiday, um, as it is in America, actually a holiday, not quite in the UK the same, but it's, you know, all for the right reasons. Um, Chris, it's super good to have you back on the show. And it's been about a year since you've been gone and you've been very busy, but how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I, actually, with that, I was going to link into veterans and things that people that have done amazing things. Talk about walking across Europe, uh, for starters, that I saw, saw you getting involved in the madness. Well, yeah, I did a little walk for charity and some of the people in this community, actually, some of the followers of this show gave me unreal support and donations. I can't thank them enough. And um, yeah, it was incredible. One of the best experiences I've had. And there was a couple of shows to do with veterans actually on our, on our YouTube channel off the back of that, including um, a couple of interviews that were really good. So they're worth checking out if you haven't done so. But yeah, it was incredible, Chris. And um, it's just great to be back on the show. And season 10 is exciting. Yeah. You've done an amazing job of booking up guests for this season already. And we're booked up into January, which is madness. Yeah. I mean, when when I first knew that I was coming back on the show, obviously we talked about guests. And you said, um, who should we get back on the show? Have you got any ideas? And I was like, yes, I have. I've literally yeah. had a year of just looking at people. <laughs> yeah, I know. And and no joke, you have done an amazing job at that. And I can't yeah, believe the guest lines we've got already. Um, as I mentioned, Will Carver coming up on the show tonight, Chris. He's been yeah. on on here before on the, I believe, as a, as a guest and on the panel show. He has been on the panel show. I remember he cutting out a lot on the panel show, so I hope that doesn't happen tonight. But I'm looking forward to talking to him about the Carververse. Um, I'm a huge fan of his. I think I'm probably one of his number one fans, um, maybe pestering him a little bit, I swear. Um, and he actually, whilst I was away, he did something really kind for me. He critiqued some of my work. Oh, wow. um, and I learned more from Will Carver than I did from paying seven, eight thousand pounds on a university course. So wow. Yeah. But you finished that now, right? I am now a, um, a master. Yeah. Way. Yeah. But yeah, I got masters in creative writing. I would not recommend it to anyone. <laughs> I would just say watch the show. You'll learn more from the writing community chat show than you will um paying those ridiculous fees um, from universities and university yeah. lectures around the world. So if you want to learn something then watch the show there's over 200 hours that you can watch back loads of really good tips from amazing writers um and yeah yeah congratulations indeed well done chris that's a that's fantastic <laughs> nonetheless you know i'm glad you got some uh, um goodness out of it um you finished it already it took me over four years but uh, leo also said just now i shared you on uh matt Sedon. i've not heard mm -hmm. of that um the writing community is great over there 
Wow. Any ideas? Yeah, I've, I've dabbled. That's what I'm going to say. I've dabbled oh. a little bit with it. I've not created an account because, again, it's getting to that point where it's like I've invested so much time and energy into Twitter. Yeah. Um, you know, it's... Wow. the only social media platform I sort of use. So using another one, I'm just like, oh. Well, thank anything. the Lord I've started branching out into Facebook, into LinkedIn and, and Quora and all these sorts of good things because who knows what's going to happen now, right? Yeah, it, I mean, uncertain times, but I don't think everyone should leave just yet. Um, Not at all. I mean, Twitter yeah. is our home. Um, that This is where the community started, the writing community. Um, apparently, yeah, Matt Sedon mm -hmm. is trying to be the new Twitter. Um, how many of you guys are on there? Let me know in the chat because that's quite interesting. I can't help myself. I know we should stick to one or two things, but I'm like, yeah, I'm a bit of a social media slut. So um, there you go. Um, Chris, I've got some facts for you. I'm going to drop some facts in here. Okay, go on. Okay. The average employer, uh, employed author apparently is the age of 41 years old. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think that sounds about right. Yeah, I don't think it's very a young man's person or a young person's uh, game, but like a lot of people quite older as well yeah do you not remember when we went to harrogate and we were looking around going yeah we are definitely some of the youngest people here <laughs> <laughs> um yeah kind of um not without slagging off a load of people but yeah um yeah i think i think that's kind of about right uh what else is there massachusetts is the best state for authors to live in apparently wow who lives in massachusetts i don't know <laughs> it's just a fact. <laughs> right. well, it, it, it might not even be real. Um, and, and apparently, sixteen percent of all authors are LGBTQ. Mm. Yeah, again, I can't believe that. Um, mm. What do they say? Is it one in every one in every five? Is it five people? I'm not sure, but they're just LGBTQ? just some interesting things. Anyway, um, we got some great new features on the show, Chris. Right, coming up, um, Chris versus Chris. Yay! Chris versus Chris. Uh, we'll do that in, in a minute, but I'll get to that. We've got Agony Aunt coming up at the end of the show, which some people have sent in some really funny questions. Uh, Halo. Yeah. And um, <laughs> some really, actually amazing, good, probably one of the best questions I've had in terms of writing we've got to answer today. Um, obviously, you saw Terry introduce the show. That was brilliant. That's a new feature. It costs about five pounds, which is you know, a great way to plug your social media account, whether it's oh, Don as well, um, whether it's your campaign on Kickstarter like Terry did, whether you're promoting a new book launch, whether you've got a TikTok account and you're trying to grow, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're a band, if you're a podcast, come and plug the star, introduce us and do it that way. Um, we got that coming up. We've got uh, a book advert service. So in the middle of this show, you will see an advert from one of uh, the viewers in this chat right now, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, the Patreon page has had a redo. We're now use, utilizing Discord. So if you are listening to this on the podcast, thank you. Um, but if we talk about a picture in this and you're on the po uh, podcast, mm -hmm. we'll upload them to Discord for you. Um, there's a brand new amazing newsletter coming out uh, for, for Patreons only, which is full of uh, tips and tricks for writing, motivational talk, new books from indie authors, new books for, from um, established authors and great stuff on there. And um, a new submission technique for the community questions where you send us um, an audio recording or a video recording of your question, and we will play that out on the show. We didn't have any for today, but that is a feature you can utilize moving forward. And of course, yeah. Chris, you, you just mentioned. Mm, I was going to say there's so many people in the chat um, asking really good stuff at, you know, at any one point when we do these shows. I would love to see those people and their actual faces and them on the screen and on the show asking really good questions and getting involved and use it as a promotional tool as well. You know, mm -hmm. say, hey, I'm the author of such and such a thing. My question is this. You know, it's a really good thing that you can get involved in. It's dead quick. Um, just literally a minute of recording and then send it in and we'll pop it in the show. Hey, Lou, just uh, commented. We will ask Will what really happened at Harrogate at 3 a.m. If you remember Ooh. back to that tweet. Um, I think that was yeah, a Florian. I, I saw that tweet and it was like... Um, I love Chris Agate or something like that. I can't remember yeah. exactly what it I'm was. I'm sure it was past 3 a.m., but there you go. Um, mm. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, so the Chris versus Chris is one of the other features. So there, there's a lot of features in there already, but this is the final one for the moment. Um, Chris versus Chris is uh, is kind of historic. We've always had the kind of talk about what's the better thing, um, the better boxer, the better chocolate, all that stuff, right? 
But this is a physical challenge coming into the new world of the WCCS. There's a ginormous fly chasing me around the room here. Um, that is, uh, we also do a book cover challenge now, which we will show you in a minute what we've done. Mm -hmm. And coming up um, could be anything that you kind of pitch to us. So yes, we've done th things um, kind of online, but we're looking at things now as well that could be more physical uh, competition wise and that sort of stuff. But what we're doing now, is the book cover challenge. And this is again, a service you can utilize because we do the covers for you guys, uh, formatted for KDP front and back, and also promote them by doing this on the show and from tweeting them and getting polls and stuff. So Chris, uh, do you wanna explain that when I try and dig out some photos? Yeah, so this was an idea that obviously we came up with when we said, how can we get the writing community involved more and what do the writing community want from us uh, as a show? One of the things was obviously book covers. You know, we talk about it a lot. Um, an amazing book cover you can get you the sales or the initial sales um, that you're after to bring in those numbers before they can actually see your writing. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with this. We're trying to, one, have a little bit of a challenge between me and Chris. Um, two, give the author a bit of exposure, give their uh, cover a bit of a rejig. And, and three, it's actually really fun to do. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. It takes a bit of time, but it's actually really fun. When you get somebody else's book and they say, this is what I want, this is kind of what I imagine, um, and then you try and put that together, it's such a really joyful, like, creative process. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's great to be a part of, and I hope more people want to get involved, even if it's just, even if you're not going to change your cover and you just want to, you know, see what somebody else could come up with or see what we could do with it, um, that might be a really good thing. What I will say is we've already had two requests post this this job, um, and we were looking at doing it once a month, so we may have to increase that. So there is the requests are coming in for this. So if you do want a, a book cover redesigned or a new cover, get in there quick and email us. But this was Brandon Morehouse, who's one of our listeners and our viewers. He he wanted to change the covers that he, he has. And in fact, he's got two. But what we're doing is um, showing what we came up with for book one today. And um, I will show you one of mine first, Chris, because I've got the comparison picture in there. But we've designed two book covers each. So what you'll get from our service is four book covers, two from each of us, uh, based on kind of what suggestions you make as well. So Brandon had a pre-existing book, and I will share this now. So if you can see in the middle, New Age Gods Discovery is Brandon's book. Um, that is the, the original cover. And this is what I came up with for book number one. What do you think of that, Chris? Yeah, I, think, I mean, it's eye-catching. Uh, the the Obviously, I can see what he's done with the middle one in terms of, you know, with that symbol and stuff. And it's very sort of Neil Gaiman-esque, um, the first one. But then, obviously, what you've done with it as well, I like that as well. Yeah. Uh, the fire is obviously really eye-catching on the front and the back. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, again, symbolism is quite strong in that one. Yeah. I, I kind of wanted to stick to kind of the symbol because he had a symbol in the, in the cover originally. So I kind of wanted to stick to that that. Um kind of setting so let me put on your first one if i can find it all right there you go <laughs> so this is chris's number one in comparison so new age gods very different to what i've come up with and it's a more modern take on the story so i kind of like that as well um what do you think in the chat there guys i think that's really nice uh it's definitely different to kind of the story that i i've gone with but if what you'll know about brandon's books if you read them or the blurbs that it's a kind of time um, that the, the story evolves over time and the time is not kind of central to the story. It moves around. So this is why there's different versions of this. So that is the first one for Chris Hooley. And I will put on my second one. So you can see that as well. I went really left field with this one uh, because I felt like the symbolism, as you mentioned earlier, Chris, was yeah. really kind of a strong theme in that. So I stuck in that sign kind of... Um, in that kind of realm, if you will. Um, but it's very different. And I wanted to make sure there was a different, complete contrast in that kind of cover design because it's um, you don't want all the things kind of similar. So there you go. That one, what do you think of that, Chris? Because that is really kind of different to what, what else we had. Yeah, it's very different. But uh, again, I, I do feel like it works really nicely. It's got sort of a Tolkien vibe to mm. it. Yeah, um, there was a comment how very Game of Thrones from Terry just came in as well. Oh, I haven't yeah. thought of it that way. Um, and let's have a look at the last one from... <laughs> and let us know if, if which your favourite is, guys, because obviously we can feed that back to Brandon. Um, he has indeed um, given feedback already. 
let me just move that banner so you can see this as well. Uh, that did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so New Age Gods, um, that is the, I'd say, saucier cover, perhaps, from Chris Hooley. Yeah, uh, I mean, the reason why I went with that cover in the end is that I've actually I created the other two. Um, even though he's not written a third one yet, I, <laughs> I've created them as a set. So what they do is that it starts off with the yellow one, then it goes on to the orange, then it goes on to a red, um, mm. and they, they're a bit more sexy as they go along. So I thought... You never know what people people want their covers to look like. Uh, Brandon didn't give us much of a sort of spec, really, in terms of when we went with it. He kind of gave us the license to have a go, um, which was really appreciated. And obviously, we, we want him to be happy. We want him to have the best cover that he, he can possibly get. So yeah. we're going to change them and switch them around. Um, but yeah, just threw that one out there. You never know if Brandon doesn't like that, somebody else might. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can reutilize these anyway. Um, Brandon's here and he says, not making any comments yet. And I like that. Ross says I gets first and Hooli's first for me, so he likes the first two. Nice. Um, yeah, but it's not about this. What this is about is Chris versus Chris. So <laughs> people yeah. need to decide which one they're going to go with. So you got two from us both, but there needs to be a winner. So, <laughs> oh, interesting. Terry said a tie with Chris hate uh, Hooli's first and my second one. So he's in favor Ooh. of the uh, the more the sandy colored Game of Thrones esque <laughs> picture there. So there you go. Um, if you want to get involved with that service and you want your books being shown around or your new covers potentially shown around and uh, polls worked on those on all the platforms, of course, I will put the links to everything again. Ross says show them again. <laughs> 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 oh, OK, we'll do it because um, I guess hasn't arrived yet. Anyway, there you go. Um, yeah, we're waiting okay. for Carver. I'm just going to I'm not being rude. I'm going to check on him on yeah, my phone. Yeah, check on him. Um, so, so this is this is my take because he went with the black kind of and uh, the black and red. I kind of saw the fire in my kind of in my mind, and then the symbolism. There was a spear involved, and I played with a lot of different spears. Um, <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Uh, and ended up with this one. So if you look on the back, actually, is what I, I started with. And there's a set of wings with a sword in the middle. And I didn't change the back of this, but that was what was on the front in the first place. Brandon wanted some changes. And of course, we're very um, helpful mm -hmm. with this. And we did it. Um, can we see them all at once? Potentially. Not entirely sure how to do that. Um, she loves the spear, Joanne. Yep. <laughs> <Not right now. laughs> uh, it reminds me of something. Okay. Mm. We're getting uh, kind of left field here. Uh, Agate loves handling a spear, Ross says. Brilliant. Good stuff. That's Brilliant. what happened at 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, spear and gold. Um, I don't know if I can share you this. You penetrate the skin, though. That's the thing. <laughs> I'm saying nothing at all. Right. <laughs> no, what I'll do is, um, guys, I can't share them at once unless I unless I do some off-screen stuff, and that's going to be quite frustrating. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say what... Uh, uh, Terry just said. Uh, uh, Chris, so before um, our guest comes on, have you got in contact with him? Yeah, I've gotten in contact with him. Um, he said he's, he's fashionably late. This is just Will Carver. This is what he does. Um, well, it's, we it's, it's okay. Him, but... It's okay. He he has he hath arrived, Chris. So yeah. if you want to introduce our our guest. In fact, no, let me play. Are we playing the trailer now or, or after? Yeah, do it. We can do it now. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. guys, this is the, the other service we mentioned. This is the book trailer service, um, and this is today's book service, uh, book trailer. Witches, demons, spirits, and ghosts haunt these pages, trickling, trapping, and seducing unwary mortals. Humans, meanwhile, are wielding magic and the spirits for their own ends. With no guarantee of good intentions or great success, Along the way, God and Lucifer wash their hands of us all. Real world and epic fantasy rub shoulders with fantasy romance and horror in this new collection of short stories by much-loved authors. Ration yourselves to one a night to colour your dreams or binge through them all in search of your next favourite series. Midwinter Magic and Mayhem, fantasy short stories for the darkest of nights, a five-star fantasy anthology. There you go. What do you think That's of that, Chris? Yeah, no, I like it. I like the fact that you've done that so you don't make any fuck-ups. 
<laughs> what do you know me uh, of course i'll pre-record um, this yes uh, yeah okay good um if you'd like to introduce our next guest uh we will get that person on and get chatting yeah, so with our next guest, I was thinking of ways to introduce him. I'm going to start off when he was a child. When he was a child, he is known in Germany as a warrior because he had to, every day when he came home from school, he had to fight his way through the Turkish ghetto. He lived in Germany, by the way. Then he had to fight his way through the Polish ghetto of Germany. Um, and obviously he survived because he's here with us now, so that's fine. But I feel, <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like that violence has spilled out into his books because he's known... Uh, for a very violent female protagonist um, and just very violent female characters in general, to be honest. Um, they're some of the most brutal characters that I've ever read. He's also known for his religious strands as well. If you've read a Carver book, there is some element that questions authority. I'm going to challenge him a little bit on that today as well and see what he thinks. Um, but yeah, he challenges religion and different ways of thinking about religion constantly. And he's written some of the best characters that I've read in recent times. Um, he's definitely one of my favorite authors that is alive and writing today. Um, so if you haven't checked out any of his books, just pick up one of them. They're, they're like nothing you've read before, and you'll definitely enjoy them. Um, so it's an absolute pleasure to have him for, what, the third time on the show now? He gets a yes. hatchery ball, I think. Um, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Will Carver. Will Carver, hello. Hello. All right. Yeah, I, I had to change my name because it was... Uh, Will Har Team Harrogate or something. I think that was the last time I was on, we did a quiz. Yeah. That is true. You were on the panel show last time and your internet connection was quite ropey at that, that, that time. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit, it was crap, wasn't it? I missed out on like one of the rounds, but we yeah. brought it back. We brought it back. You did, you did. How are you doing, Will? I, oh. I say that as you're taking a swig of, of gin, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it was Friday night, <laughs> isn't it? So yeah, let's let's get on it. I've got like a backup a backup whiskey in case I, I get through the gin. So okay, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, people who are saying hello. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> so it is. It's actually amazing to have you back on the show. And there was a few comments earlier about the tweet that you sent from Harrogate once, but we're not. We don't have to get into that at all. But um, <laughs> I had forgotten about that uh, because it was like two years ago now. Yeah. Oh man, I was. Yeah, I had to be dragged back to my hotel by my <laughs> girlfriend that night because I was just, no. I'd had so much, I'd had quite a lot to drink. I was i was just becoming unbelievably wonderful, I think. <laughs> uh, <that's, laughs> yeah, it was heading to a bad place after that. So, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I kind of felt like we were both like just <laughs> excited spirits that the later the hour got and everyone else was like drifting off to bed and we were like, yeah. We, we wanted to stay up and it was it wasn't happen happening so um, no they'd all go. they'd all overdone it the night before and yeah. uh, i think and and you know some of us can do two nights in a row yeah. you know <laughs> they peaked yeah. great uh, well they peaked yeah that was it <laughs> cool mental love it uh, i've got it to miss out on that by the way i saw you from a distance in harrogate i was like to i get i was like will's arrived and to be fair i just heard like an usher in of will Cavs arrived will Cavs arrived <laughs> Oh yeah, um, <laughs> like a celebrity just arriving. Um, that is what it's like, definitely. Yeah, yeah. They're all like, "Look at him, he looks so cool. Look what he's wearing. Like he's so casual, but so cool at the same time." I was like, "All right, calm down. It's you know, we've had a drink with him. Like we'll go over when we when we're ready, type thing." And then obviously it didn't happen for me. I, you two went out, and I've yeah, I've got it. But you had to go off, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Family emergencies. Who Sad times. Happen? <laughs> yeah yeah exactly well chris so, i'm intrigued how you're going to crack into some of these questions for well you seemed like uh you had some some serious thought into some of these i do have a lot of questions for will with <laughs> some some thought <laughs> involved um but i feel like karen will shout at will if he doesn't tell us about the pitch for suicide <laughs> first days because he generally tends to forget the pitch uh for his latest book which is out very shortly. Uh, yeah. So if we weeks. go into that first, then we can ask the questions that I've got for Will. Uh, yes, I know. She's very, I don't, oh, I'm hoping she's not on tonight. I always feel like she's watching me. <laughs> I, I like whatever panel I'm on, I can look around it. It's completely pitch black and it's like she's glowing, scowling at me, wondering what I'm going to say wrong next. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, Suicide Thursday. Um, it's about a guy called Eli. He, he, can't finish anything in his life he hates his job he hates the woman he's with 
um, and he wants to write a book, but he can never get past the first chapter. He's got like this whole library of first chapters that he's um, he's trying to sell to writers who can't start. Um, and at the very beginning of the book, his his best friend uh, takes his own life, and obviously it's it's sad and it impacts him, but um, weirdly, in a positive way, it, it makes him feel like he should finish something, just like his his best friend did, albeit his own life. And it sounds incredibly bleak, and it has the word suicide in the title, but it's not. I think it's it's really it's my lightest it's my lightest book, and there's a lot of dark humor in there to to outweigh the the uh, the bleakness of of that subject. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I remember when we interviewed you on the show, you talked about this book you started it but then didn't finish it and then it was something that you were going to go back to so why do you feel like now was the time to go back to this to this book and, and get it done so it, it was it was actually the first book i ever wrote i was mm. at university and i had this idea and um it was more you know i was like i was really into nick hornby at the time and i kind of wanted it to be like high fidelity but in a, in a bookshop but this guy only sells first chapters and he's, he's pissed off with the world and he thinks he's a great writer um and then when I eventually got an agent she said to me what you think the book is about that's that's it's that's not what it's about and I was like oh right what's it about then and then she told me and I, I was about 50 odd thousand words in and I just scrapped it and I rewrote it again it's like a, a theme with me I've done this a lot um <laughs> and I rewrote it again and um it was it got very close to being um being published but i didn't quite get there and i just kept it aside because i just i loved the idea i i love this eli character he's mm. he's he's very rich um but um yeah i just think i've just kind of honed my craft over like 10 books and i thought i'll go back to this and i'll rewrite it again third time lucky um inject some kind of crime element into it because there wasn't one before and I just it felt like I, I was ready to write it how it should be written, which is what we have now. Yeah. How, how do you feel when someone tells you, <laughs> especially when you have a great idea in your mind of what this book is, that that isn't what the book is? How do you react to that? <clears throat> well, to be fair, I was very kind of green. It was early days then. And, and, and I didn't really know what I was doing. I don't even know if I do now. But <laughs> I uh, I just kind of took on that you know, my agent had been in the business for, for years yeah. and she, she knew more than I did. So I was just like, you know, yeah, okay, I'll go with it. You're probably right. And I'm probably wrong. So I just, I think it's, this is why it's lovely having editors and things because you do get into a book so deep. Um, and you, you might think it's great. I don't know if I ever, ever do, but, um, yeah, they, they make it better. Like people outside make it better, I think. And, uh, so I just, I trusted it um yeah and 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 she was right she was right she, i mean she pretty much always was so yeah she's not my agent now but um but she uh yeah she was great and she was right yeah <laughs> oh, i've got some uh, that sounds like a great book and i i can't wait to read it um but i've got some questions now that i'm not going to say which books they're related to in the carververse because okay. i don't want to give any sort of spoilers away but i think you will know what books they're related to I hope um, so. <laughs> yeah. um, so if you could sell your soul for something in exchange, what would you sell your soul for and why? Gosh, I mean, would I do it? Would I do it to have kind of a global best-selling novel, millions of copies sold? Yes. Yes, I would. I would just, you know, it would be it would be nice. I love I, I have this wonderful kind of cult following that um which is which is great i i love that but i just like the cult to be like as big as like the scientology <laughs> or something you know like you know yeah. so um so yeah i guess i guess you know that or you know i don't know i mean you can't sell your soul and say oh i'd like to live forever or whatever <laughs> you know mm. but you know i kind of like the idea of that as well i don't, I don't mm. uh, yeah oh, i'm not sure about that Oh, I just, I can't, I can't think about death, which is crazy because I write about it all the I time. I know, yeah. Right? I just, <laughs> so yeah. yes, something like that. I should say something selfless, like, oh, health for all my family. And stuff. <laughs> but, you know, I'll look after them with that massive, you know, global yeah. hit. So yeah, yeah I would, mm. I would. But I'd like, to, I'd like to have a, 
I'd like to have something like that, but writing the stuff that I am rather than mm. saying, oh, you know, I'll just I'll stop this and I'll write something cozy or or Nick Hornby. You know. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't mind. I love Nick Hornby still, you know, yeah. I, th I, st I think this is like the, the closest I've got to to going towards that, which is, you know, obviously I'm in this crime area, but I but I'm also not. So I'm yeah. kind of pushing out of it. So I'm. Yeah, I think this is my least crimey book. Ooh. A step towards a romance. Can a romance happen in a Carververse? Uh, can it? Yes. What, what? Are you telling me that Good Samaritans isn't a love story? That is, I mean... Yeah, I mean, it's, one of the dirt, it's a dirty love story, like a dirty, gritty love story. But yeah, I, I, I can see, I can see that. Well, well I've just filthy. noticed, is, yeah. is there a reindeer dancing around your jingles? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, getting festive already. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that is. This is the festive one. But the decorations are not up yet because I have seen someone on writing community this week with the decorations up. No, we're, we're currently having an extension, so there's bricks and dust and things everywhere. I've literally the background. You know how you get these people on here, and like I saw, I watched the Ian Rankin one you did. And he's got all his books behind him. Yeah, and he looks great, and everyone looks yeah. so bloody professional. And it's just like. If I open those curtains, it's like a, a building. <laughs> so I just I pick yeah. the one corner where it looks kind of like I'm I'm not sleeping in my lounge at the moment because a big hole in the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. If I turn this uh, desk around, this is why I moved the desk away from the wall because uh, that is a horrendous mess. So there you go. Right. <laughs> it's all a lie, everybody. It's like uh, the TARDIS. Don't worry about it. Yeah. 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 So my next question again. This is linked to a book, and I'm not going to say which one. But uh, what's the worst thing that your partner could possibly do? That you would be willing to help cover up. Nice All right. question, I wondered, Chris. I wondered where you were going with that. Well, I think, you know, if 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 you if you love someone, you'll do anything. I think, you know, if if you know, if <laughs> if, if if she came and said, I've uh, uh killed my ex. I don't know what to do with his body. I'll be like, Well, guess what? I do. Go and buy some, <laughs> <laughs> go and buy some bleach. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything I wouldn't do. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I, I, I would do anything. But yes, mm. I would do that. I would do that. And obviously, I know which book you're referring to. And uh, yeah, it's true love, man. It's true love. <laughs> Brandon just said in the comments. Oh, sorry, that's not Brandon. Uh, if it is it a cover up if there's no body? Mm. Interesting question. Whoa, wow, this is deep for a Friday yeah, night, I right? Know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Give, give, I'll come back to that. It'll be like the old um, meatloaf song, wouldn't it? Yes. Just won't do that. But what is but, the uh, hell? Yeah. What is the? Oh, not yeah, that? No, I got you. Yeah. 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 Mm. So the next one is not a question. I'm going to give you two titles to explore. Okay. <laughs> and let's pretend I'm Karen for a minute. Visual change. Um, yeah. She says, "You will. You've got to write one of these books. It's either this one or this one." Okay. So the first title is Maeve, The Childhood Years. Oh, yeah. And the second one is The Strange History of Mrs. May. Which well, one are you going to write and why? Well, I am currently writing A Strange History of Mrs. May. So um, so that, and I'm loving it. So obviously yeah. she's, yeah, she's the old lady that works in the Beresford building. And um, there's obviously more to her than meets the eye. I love her. I love her because she's like this doddery old fool, but there's like a darkness under there. <laughs> um, and so, yes, I'm writing the currently writing the, the sequel to the Beresford, but it's actually a prequel. And it's um, and it does involve her. She's 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 got little snippets throughout. Um, so it will it, it will end before the original Beresford begins. Uh, so, yeah, it's like an origin story, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah, she's okay. she's she's. I think Maeve from Psychopaths Anonymous is my yeah. favourite character to write. She's just mm -hmm. brutal and funny and awful. Um, and uh, but Mrs. May is 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 my second. Yeah, I must admit that uh, there will. There's been like uh, one of the lowest reading years I've had because I've just been so busy doing multiple things. Psychopaths Anonymous is a book that I read uh, this year, so mm. I, I I think I think that should be. Um, recognize from you because i don't i've read like 
no other books this year. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, well, you so you picked the right one. You picked the right yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. I, I believe it. it's, it's currently 99p on Kindle, just in case anyone yeah. wondered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, There'll be well, links uh, to that and, and, and the yeah. new book in the, in the description, guys. Don't worry. It's nice that you do get in these slumps, though, don't you? Where it's like Ooh. everything you pick up is shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it's nice when you find the one that pulls you out of it. Mm. Yeah. I had that. I was I was I was on holiday, and I was just like the four books I'd tried before I went were just I couldn't get I couldn't get like more than 35, 50 pages in, and then I grabbed um, I had read two books: Sarah Pinbra Insomnia, brilliant, whizzed through it. It got me back on track, and then I read uh, Will Dean. The last thing to burn. I, I tore through that as well. Mm. So it's nice when you get one that kind of reignites it. Yeah. Ooh, saucy question. Yeah. They're, they're great <laughs> authors from the writing uh, from the crime community um, mm. of authors. Is there someone in the crime community that you don't particularly like reading? Um, you're probably not going to answer <laughs> that. <laughs> you're probably not going to answer that, and you don't have to. But it's a great question for that. I think. It is good, and most people wouldn't answer that. <laughs> um, no, I don't know if there's if there's anyone I I don't like, but there's lots that that I haven't like. Ooh. I haven't read like a Val McDermott book. I've never I've never read one, and it's not because I'm a, I'm avoiding it or I don't like her or I think she's shit. I just I have never read one. Um, and there's, but I've never been a big crime reader. I've said this a few times, and uh, <laughs> so. Yes, there's no one that I, I actively avoid, but <laughs> there are people that I probably should have read and I haven't. Yeah, do you know what? It's actually almost like um, an expectation and like a pressure that you, when you know so many people in, in the writing world that you feel like you need to read their book and it's rude not to, but then people have to write and have to do their work. So it's quite a difficult thing to manage, isn't it? It's really difficult. I think uh, when you're starting out and you're kind of meeting people, like who are mm. big writers, you think oh, it's kind of scary. But it yeah. actually doesn't need to be that. I mean, majority of people are very, very nice, but I, I mean, I, I had a year where all I read was crime. I read like mm. 200 books in a year, it's the most I've ever read. And it was just because I was meeting people, and I thought they're really nice, I should read their book. And then you can't do it because you're meeting people all the time and <laughs> you'll, you'll, ne you'll never get anything done. But uh, that, I mean, it was a big reading year. Mm, um, yeah. But yeah, you, you you can't do it, and it's you, you know once you've been in it a while, you can pick out the ones that you should read. I think. So again, well, I'm going to take you to a different book, but this is not really a question. Um, this is more of a sort of fan based statement from me because I I want to know what's happening with this. Um, so the neighbour, and yeah. I'm going to have to say the book because <laughs> the, in the days next door. Yeah. Um, so is he going to make another appearance? Because. When I finished that book, the neighbor stayed with me for, for like weeks. I was thinking, what, what's going to happen to this neighbor now that this thing has kind of potentially transpired? <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, is the neighbor going to make another appearance? It's difficult to say because all of my characters span all the different books, even though they're not really related necessarily. Um, and I like that you like the neighbor because the neighbor was was essentially me. Um, in, in in my building, um, I mm. I lived next to the Dave's next door. And I mm. was the neighbour, so um, I like that you liked him because he's <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yes. There is there is always potential for any of my characters to turn up. There was a nice little I put um, Detective Pace in that book just at the end, like a little. You did, yeah, yeah. I like, so yeah, I like to you know cross everything over. Yeah, this does tie into another question, I suppose. Um, how, when you said you put pace in there and he was in there for like a little snippet, what's the least amount you could put in a book to have him appear? <laughs> like, um, well, I think uh, in, in Nothing Important Happened Today, I mentioned that there was a, a detective with Detective Paulson on the bridge and... Um, that was January David from my first series, my first three books. Um, and I didn't mention him by name. So I guess like that is the least. I didn't even mention his name. But yeah. those who know he was partnered up with Paulson will know that that was him. So, yeah, that's the least. Not mentioning them. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> if I can just ask off the back of that then, Will, um, what advice can you give someone who's starting to write perhaps any kind of genre? How do you link books together 
and remain aware of, of, of doing that, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think it's, for me, I find it easy just because I, <coughs> I have like a few books in advance thought out at least. I'm kind of, I'm writing one and planning one, the next one, and then I'm thinking about something else and I've always wow. got something in the in the bottom drawer so it's 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 a bit easier for me because I've always got so much on the go but I don't know you I think the the characters that you love to write will always find you can always find a space for them in something so you, there is one that crops up in Suicide Thursday that you you you're not expecting um Ooh. yeah and she's, and she's lovely I love her yeah so yeah yeah I'm going to stick with the Dave's next door and I'm, yeah. I'm hoping I'm getting this name right. Is it Lalia? Oh, Layla, yes. Layla, yes. there we go, <laughs> Layla. <laughs> so Layla, AKA the fake angel, um, will she get her comeuppance? Because where it was left for me, I was I was fuming. I was like, this person needs punishing. <laughs> oh, well, I in my head, I see it that she does on that mm. bus. Um, mm. So yes. But speaking of characters that you want to bring back, I love her. She's mm. so evil, and there's clearly a backstory that we need to know there. So she's kind of again, she's in like a bottom drawer somewhere. I'm thinking, oh yeah, she's yeah. I'm thinking Maeve as well. Those two crossing over, if it's yeah. ever happened, that would be a <laughs> shit show of dead bodies. Like a, a fight to the death. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm exactly, up there. Yeah. Okay. I'll note that down. Yeah, thanks. yeah, in the book. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I asked you, I asked a question the other day that I asked for another podcast uh, mm. that I've not had the privilege of listening to in terms of the Carver verse is such a fully. I'm I'm worried now because the look on your face. <laughs> well, no, because the problem, the thing is, so they have a like a paid podcast. Yeah, and uh, they put out a thing on Twitter saying, "Oh, if any of our paid people have like questions, let us know." Yeah. And uh, you just whacked something out on Twitter, like five different questions. So your name was Dirt. It was like, oh, we're asking his questions. He hasn't even paid to listen to our podcast. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, I mean, it is funny. We, I mean, you take up like 20% of that podcast talking about you. It's very funny. But, yeah, yeah. Um, you should, yeah, give them, give them their 50p or whatever it is. To, yeah. yeah, I will do. I mean, they've got a great model. Um, me and Chris were like, how the fuck are these guys making so much money? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what we do we're just giving it out for free like we're just doing it live on a friday night um, it's mental like, it's yeah. mad they they contacted me again because i did an interview with them a while back and uh they they got in contact and said have you had something come out in south america recently and i was like i don't know i sell quite i sell more books in mexico than i do in the uk weirdly i don't know why and uh oh, and it's all the violence yeah <laughs> And they said, um, <laughs> we've had a thousand downloads of your your interview, like in the last day. And I was like, this what? is weird. Like they, we, everyone's searching if there's something going on. And then that happened for like 10 days. Like just Ooh. like, just every day, like thousand, 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 thousand people. And uh, yeah, so they asked me back because they were like, wow, for some reason, like Brazil loves you. I was like, okay. Um, yeah, but they're obviously doing something right. Clearly. Yeah. Hashtag Brazil today, Chris. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So my question on that was obviously the Carver versus like a fully fledged, like it feels like a living, breathing sort of like alternative reality now. Um, and sort of like my question is, obviously, you've got loads of different characters. <clears throat> Where have you not been that you want to go that you see a character sort of on the peripheral? Are you like, I'm definitely going to pick them up at some point? I mean, it's, I've got 150 ideas. This is this is the problem. There's not enough hours in the day. So, so obviously, I'm revisiting the the Beresford again. Um, I, I and obviously, I focused on these like six little flats down the bottom, and there was this whole hulking edifice above that I never even went to. So, I'm going there. That's where I'm going. Mm. I've never been to. Um, but there's just yeah, there's just there's a load of characters that I need to, I need to explore. That Layla from from uh, the Dave's next door. I uh, I've got this idea as well about like an evangelical preacher. I just I got mm. really into it. I started following loads of them on Twitter and like <laughs> not, noting down things that they say. And I found some near me that I'm I'm going to go to some of their 
speeches and sermons and things and like healings and 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 see what what it's all about and obviously I do lots of stuff about religion and faith mm. and belief and 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 I just I want to take it a bit further and 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 look into that so that's somewhere I haven't been that I, I have to go but it's, mm. it's going to be a lot of research um but I think it could be huge fun I saw a guy today who charges a hundred dollars uh, if you dm him he charges you a hundred dollars and he will do a very special prayer just for you and i was wow. like, i was like this is a crazy world that i need to look into more yeah is it a miss may type prayer or is this yeah well like, i will yeah if it is it could work but um <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's what yeah. a world like people are responding to him saying i i need i really need a, a, a proper like a decent prayer hmm. and it's yeah like, man well, it must be a real one because you know that you know costs so much money. But you know, yeah, I feel yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be real. Um, yeah. I hope he's got some reviews somewhere. Uh, okay, Chris. Before we move on, guys, we're going to move on to the last kind of the end section. So, if you've got questions for Will or for us, for any of us, send them in now. But what I was going to do uh, for this season is stalk Instagram from our for my guests. But I had a bit of a malfunction when I tried to when I tried to stalk Will Will Carver on Instagram because let me share this page. Look how incredibly neat and tidy this is. There's no dirt on this page. I know. <laughs> what I know. Is that? I, so I just I just had this idea. I just oh, I don't love Instagram. Like I love Twitter. I, and, I love that. But I like I thought I'll just do what I read, what I write, and what I drink. So. <laughs> <laughs> these are like my 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 things like you know my handle you know or my my bio just is like writer thinker drinker or whatever and i thought oh i'll just i'll just do that people can see what i'm reading and if they you know i don't say i'm loving this book i'm just saying this is what i'm reading um mm. and then and then like a little snippet of what i'm writing and then whatever whiskey that i can see there there's i had a coffee which is nice actually i was just talking we can't find that mug um, <laughs> well, I was, yeah. I was literally, uh, there's been multiple occasions where I've, I thought, I'm going to make my Instagram tidy. It's lasted two posts and it's gone. I can't do it. That is amazing. I saw a guy that I used to go to school with. He works in fashion now. And he does something where he does like a color picture, a black and white picture, and then a video. Mm. And his whole thing, and I was like, that is that really kind of taps into my OCD. You know, I, 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 I like the neatness and the order of that. So, uh, yeah. so I thought I'd try it myself. It's wonderful. I, I, and... I don't keep up with it, but yeah. But there's definitely no dirt I could have taken from that. So well done. Yeah, well sorry. played, sir. Well played. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. We have one question here, guys. Again, send them in. Um, how do you decide on a book title? Does it change and why? Yes, it all it almost always changes. Um, so my very first book, Girl Four, I originally called that Girl Four, and my agent said that's not going to work. We'll call it The Smiling Man because there's a character in it called The Smiling Man. Mm. And then when the publisher picked it up, they were like, "Yeah, we love this book. We think it should be called Girl Four. I was like, "Yes." <laughs> um, <laughs> and then the next book, I wanted to call it Syzygy. And uh, they went and it ended up being called The Two. That changed. So I think um, my last my last four or five books, they've, they've gone with what I said. Um, mm. I think if, if you hand it in late enough and they haven't got enough time to kind of uh. Uh, <laughs> like change it. But um, mm. I'm having real trouble with this new Beresford book because like, part of me just wants to call it Beresford Two. <laughs> <laughs> Beresford Harder. Like, you know, yeah. uh, but... But that's mm. shit. So I need the to return of Beresford. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So mm. I'm, I'm having real trouble with that. So at the moment, that's called it's called the Beresford experiments. And for a while, I called it Hotel Beresford. Uh, it's just it's really hard. But once you get again, this is like what I said earlier about having mm. uh, an editor and an agent that they then come in and say, why don't you call it this? And the hardest thing is is the strap line underneath mm. that I just. I'm awful at it. Like the what is it? Suicide Thursday is if words could kill. I did come up with that one. Um, but I just I, I can't. I can't. You want it to be like enticing for readers, but uh I my brain doesn't work in that way, like in a marketing way. That's a great answer. Uh another question's come in from Anya. Um not so much about writing. A question about eggnog. 
<laughs> Yemi or not, uh, what do you spike it with, if anything? I, I can't say I've, I've ever had it. I have had it that <coughs> before I was vegan, um, I I did have it. Um, and I can't remember what I had it with. I think. Do you know what? I just think I had like a Starbucks eggnog latte or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, yeah. And, and, you know, I, I think caffeine. like Christmas, I used to have like an Advocar and lemonade like a snowball, but I can't mm. have that now because Advocar has egg in it. And it's so, oh. yeah, I know. Well, Joanne said eggnog should be consumed only out of a reindeer encrusted glass, which you do have. Well, I've, I'm halfway there. I'm halfway there, yeah. <laughs> and strangely, Halo says, ooh, I've had interesting experiences with eggnog. Uh, I'm not sure. And that's it. Make of that. Yeah. What? <laughs> that's evil. Halo, <laughs> Halo makes eggnog sound like a person. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, Okay, so I've got a a little video, Chris. Apparently, someone had been helped to help us with agony aunt section. So I'll play this little video, and then uh, we'll get on to the the agony aunt questions we've got. Yeah, not too sure about that one. Um, okay, that was kind of creepy, wasn't it? That was creepy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, first one, what tips do you have for beating writer's block? And this is a, it's, it's a well-asked question. And I think we might all have different answers for this, but let's go with Chris first, uh, right. Chris back on the show. What do you think of this? Uh, I'm going to say the generic stuff, um, the sort of going on a walk, getting out into nature. Uh, <laughs> oh, <my answer. laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, just just doing those sort of things because I feel like even washing up for me is a great one. When I'm washing up, I'll have ideas. If I'm not listening to a podcast or something, I'll just be there washing the pots thinking this is shit and something <laughs> will pop in to my mind. Um, so, yeah, just, just go out and be active, I think. Do something with your body. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm, interesting. Well, I, uh, I, I've, I, I, I rarely have it. I rarely have it. I, I, I yeah, there's too much going on, but I, uh, I think it's a great idea to do something that pisses you off, because I think great things come from anger. I, I think um, I was, I was, I went to my son's rugby match yesterday. Like he was in a rugby tournament, and one of the kids, he made a mistake. He got so angry, he was brilliant for the rest of the game. He was just, he was great. His dad was just like, I tell him, just play angry, just play angry. And I think a lot of my ideas come from me being annoyed about something and uh yeah as someone who doesn't really suffer with writer's block i think if i did i would do something that Ooh. that made me angry or listen to some music that makes you feel something um yeah that's my that's my advice whether it's good or not i don't know that is good and i i think um everyone's different so taking in different ideas yeah. is great and i'm very much the same as crystal my idea um going for a walk i posted oh, Chris, that. actually on that i'll give you a, i'll give you one of the one things that i actually learned on the master's that oh, is on. slightly worth paying for um, because, like, as I said before the show, I don't know if Carver heard this, but he did more for me on my Masters than the whole course did mm -hmm. uh, just by editing a little tiny bit and looking at my work. Um, yeah, I should have given you all that money, to be honest, because it's oh, much more. I need it. I need it. <laughs> that co those courses are ridiculously priced as well. Yeah, they are. But one of the good things was if you're suffering from writer's block, write like somebody else. Um Pick, pick a favorite author, pick somebody um, that you admire or that you feel that you want to write about. Use their character, use their tone, things like that. Just play around for a little bit. And I think what it does is it gives you that joy back for writing and then you can kick on to your own stuff. I like that. I'm, I mean, I'm basically always trying to write like Chuck Palahniuk. So that, <laughs> I, that, I, I'm doing it without knowing this this theory. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. That getting that one exercise in getting the mind going that's for me all day long we've got another question come in so i'll ask this one um someone we may recognize uh lucas says having seen yeah. and enjoyed immensely will's talents uh, as a singer guitarist is he like so many writers a frustrated rock star uh yeah oh, he's, <laughs> he's very kind uh no i think <laughs> yeah no that is that is it isn't it it's like lots of kind of stand-ups want to be an actor and you know actors want to be singers and singers want to act um no i just want to write i the music is for me is just like a real escape like when i used to work in an office and i wanted to be a writer like i'd get home at the end of the day and just play my guitar for 20 minutes and it was just like 
okay the world's gone and i've been teaching myself the piano and stuff and yeah it's my escape so no luca <laughs> i know i know i'm probably good enough <laughs> <laughs> no call up to uh ian rankin's band yet then uh no no, no. not yet Terrible. we'll see we'll see yeah, I'll um, I th- I, I've got. To, I've got to say, I think if you're a creative in the sense of a writer or a musician, I, they're not translatable. There's obviously a massive difference in skill, but I think you, once you're a creative mind, you want to create stuff, whether it's music or writing. And I think that's kind of um, an addiction in that sense. If I mean, you know, yeah. if you know what I mean. I think you're right. Yeah, it, it translates. I mean, like I paint as well, so it's like it's just like yeah, multi-talented. Will cover. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> yeah, I heard as well that Will Carver was pulled in the strings in the England versus Scotland football match until he had to disappear. So, uh, I, I went off the pitch and it all went to pot. Um, uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was pretty awful. I've just tried to get in the way of Doug Johnston most of the time, uh, and that was that was my goal, <laughs> just to piss him off. And I did. Okay, I'm going to hurry up with these questions because we're Sorry. running out of time. No, 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 not at all. Um, let me see what we've got here. Um, this is a brilliant question. I, I don't know why I, I, I like this so much because I think the answer eludes me as well. Um, Lisa from Twitter said, is it common or wrong for the characters to talk to the reader, breaking the fourth wall? Uh, it's the best thing in the world. Like I always do it. It's it's really hard to do that kind of second person, but I love it. I like just pu- punching a, a, a reader out of the story and making them think for a second. It's the best. That's, I do it in every book. Yeah. So the question, Will, is, for any advice for people like myself who who do like I love it through the medium of film um wouldn't know how to do it on a book how do you do that what advice would you give to me yeah I mean it's it's a really weird way to write I think but um I think you have to directly address in in the same way that you'd see in a film high fidelity the film you know John Cusack talks directly to the screen I think you can do that in a book you just ask that question of the reader, I do it loads in the Dave's next door, like just like pull them in and say, "What do you think of this?" You know, uh, what uh, you you're you're thinking this now, aren't you? And it's just, it makes a reader feel uncomfortable, and that mm. that gets them thinking rather than just absorbing the story. Yeah, the day I can speak for a reader of the Dave's next door. There was moments where I was just like, "Jesus, my brain is not ready to like comprehend what's just been asked of me right now." Yeah. <laughs> like it's literally like. Imagine you didn't exist, and how does that feel for a few minutes? And <laughs> think about that. <laughs> just yeah. that. So, yeah. Uh, Linda yeah. says I can barely get my characters to talk to me. Uh, you know, it's it's a <laughs> tough thing. It's a tough thing. Yeah. Um, Halo, Halo, brilliant question as always. If you had to eat a writer's face to save humanity, whose face would you eat and why? Eyeballs optional, can season with salt. Uh, probably Lucas. Um, <laughs> it's is is it's an ample face uh, but it's friendly you know i think it would taste nice there's some italian in there as well in him so i think you know who doesn't like italian mm. yeah that is was an unexpected question i don't even know where the answer came from there but yeah, yeah great answer chris that was a very quick answer i feel like it, it's been said before <laughs> uh, <laughs> um oh, i'll go eat somebody's face and their eyeballs um mm. who could do without eyeballs <laughs> <laughs> um what a, what a question to ask Ross Young, Young, just just because he's in the chat and i, I was gonna um, say ross Young. yeah he might have disappeared and i feel like he has some delicious eyeballs so it's, it's probably because he lives in france now and yeah it's gotta be tasty right? french sophistication in the eyeball <laughs> that's what you're after uh absolutely um, I've recently started doing writing sprints and they've helped me break out of a block. Does anyone else have hacks to beat imposter syndrome into a gooey, a gooey plump, gooey pulp? pulp. Get that right. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> um, imposter syndrome. I think most creatives have that. And I think a lot of the people we've had on this show, Mark Billingham said himself, um, if we're just waiting to be found out, if that makes sense. You know, a lot of people don't feel like they're in the game. Um, what about imposter syndrome? How do we deal with that? I think it's really hard, and and it's weird for me. I feel like I, I I I kind of I do get that. I do get that. Like if I'm in a room with like big writers, what am I doing here? I'm on a panel with with someone who's sold a gajillion books. It's like why am I on this panel? So I d- I don't know. I think it's very hard to have that self belief 
uh, but you also do need it. You need to believe that you are a decent writer. Yeah. Um, I, d- I don't know how you beat it because it, it's crazy to me when I talk to these writers who, like Mark or, or you know, other writers, I don't want to go into names, but th- but they they feel the same as you. And you're just like, yeah. that's it's insane. I don't know if you can beat it. I think. I think you just yeah you just go with it. I mean, it's a, it's a if everyone's feeling that way, then it's all right. I think that's the big thing, isn't it? The big takeaway, as I mentioned, so many people who've been on the show have said a very similar thing. And it is a universal feeling that we all kind of, even from my level of only releasing a couple of novellas to, to people like yourself who release many books uh, and doing it professionally, the feeling is the same. So that <coughs> lack of confidence at times or the, the doubt and the, the lack of self-belief is just a natural feeling and that you should go through it anyway, um, is my response to that. It's very weird because you, you all all you want to do is say, oh, when someone says to you at a party, what do you do? Oh, I'm a writer. And then yeah. you get to that situation. like, oh, If I say that, they're going to say, oh, have I read anything you've written? And then you feel like, oh, I'm not. So yeah. it's, 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 look, it's dead in the face and go, I work in a morgue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. I'm going away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, OK. So, uh, obviously, we've approached the hour, Chris. Um, mm. But as a Carver fan, I want to know when I can get my hands on this book and it comes out. It is 13 days from now, the 24th of November. I think the audiobook is 1st of December. And I love that because we've got the guy back that did the first three, like Good Samaritans. Oh, he's so good. His voice is how I hear my voice in my head and that, until I hear what my voice is like. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, so, yeah, a couple of weeks, two Thursdays time. Nice. Brilliant. Um, before we do wrap this up, Chris, I want to ask you a question. If you remember back to the start of the show, and this is something that will be ongoing <clears throat> in the rest of season 10. So audience, try and answer this if you have the, the answers. Um, what did I say the average age of authors were at the start of the show? 41. Correct. Well done. What was the best state to live in? Massachusetts. Two out of two. And what percentage was the LGBT community of authors? 15 or 16 percent which one are you going with oh, i'll say 15 uh you're wrong 16 <laughs> percent. So two out of three oh. is not bad there you go um <laughs> good memory well done um the answers in the chat were good as well um well where can people find that book that is coming out very soon and all your previous books and information about you uh all good bookshops, some rubbish ones. Um, <laughs> you know, they, if you can find it in a Waterstones, let me know. Um, but go to your local one, Amazon, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty much always on Twitter. You can find me, yeah. Will underscore Carver. And get on my website, subscribe. You know, get the, <laughs> new, get the newsletter. It's just you, you'll get stuff that, that, that others don't. It's it. Yeah, That's the some way. secrets that you won't... Uh, you won't get anywhere else. Yeah. So has Will got a busy weekend planned? Are you, are you kind of watching the rugby? What is that your sort of thing? What's going on there? <laughs> it is my sort of thing, yes. Yeah, but yeah. I uh but I've got I just got, you know, life. I've got, you know, I've got <laughs> like clubs and football and dancing for kids and things. And then Sunday I'm at Burt's Books in Swindon, writing uh writing? I'm not writing, I'm signing books. Uh there for uh Suicide Thursday's got early copies. So, you know, if you're in the area, mm. get in um so yeah that's that's pretty much my weekend nice and i'll probably write a few words if i can just a couple of words yeah. uh chris what about you oh, i wasn't prepared for that question mate just general <laughs> life. yeah um just recovering life. I've been, yeah i've been really ill this week so mm. recovering sleeping um reading more stuff <laughs> Things like that. Well, Chris, it was an absolute pleasure to have you back on the show. Will, you the same as well. Uh, it's been fantastic. And season 10 is now here. And we're, we're up up and running with an incredible guest list that Chris Hooley has put together. So we can't wait. And Will is sipping some beautiful gin out of, icy gin out of that glass. She's um, brilliant. She's brilliant. So, so we might we might just stay on having a drink we'll see what happens uh, but thank you guys for tuning in i can't thank you enough for all the support during the season break and the excitement for tonight as well uh for you listening back again like i said all the pictures that we put up tonight i will put on the discord including the book covers that we showed off at the start of the show for me it's thank you and goodbye and uh you guys as well um it's been a blast 
and we'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye, guys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>